the night. Um, I am uh, from this area. I've pastored about four years. I'm actually transitioning to senior pastor role out in Florida. But man, it's so good to be here with you. I was honored to get the invite from Bill, of course. Um, by the way, props to y'all for giving him that chance to go on the sabbatical and get some rest and that family time. Um, that's really important for him. Um, so I know that means a little bit more work on your side of your staff and other leaders, but just props to y'all for doing that and investing in him in that way. I'm excited to be with you. Um, I just want to share a little bit. Here's a picture of my family I'd love to show you. So Mary, my wife, Katie, we've got three kiddos. Um, you may look at this picture and think, wow, they must have it all together, right? This is what we normally look like. Just kind of a little crazy, lots of energy with little kiddos, all the things, but we love it. Wouldn't trade it for anything. So absolutely um, just love life. Um, as we meet here tomorrow morning, um, I just wanted to spend some time looking in uh, the, the book of Mark. And we're going to dive in here in a second. But the, the topic for this message is called Choosing Faith Over Fear. Choosing Faith Over Fear. And, and I, I want to share with you the story from my childhood. I, um, several decades ago, as a teenager, I went on this trip with my family to Florida. So we're in Florida on this week-long vacation, spend time on the beach, all the things you do in Florida, right? And as we're spending uh, time there, at the end of the trip, it's like the last day, this storm hits. And it was a big enough storm that we're going to stay inside, okay? We're going to watch and, and see and play games and all that. So we're doing all those things. And um, started to notice the storm, the storm was getting stronger and stronger, and I thought, man, this is kind of cool, right? I'm a teenager at the time. I'm just kind of watching, and the wind's getting stronger and all the things. At one point, I look out the window, and the rain is going sideways. And I was like, that's so cool, right? <laughs> it was just funny because you're, you're a teenager. You don't understand what's going on because uh, one of the next things that happened is I looked out the window again. A palm tree had fallen over on our van. And I went in that moment from this feeling of amazement to this feeling of fear. I started to ask questions like, what's going to happen? Is the van going to be okay? How are we going to get home? Wait a second. The van just got smashed by a tree. Are we going to be okay in here? All these questions come to mind, right? And if I knew then what I know now, I would have known everything would be okay. In fact, I probably would have continued to be amazed at the power of the storm. This is actually a Category 4 hurricane that hit. There's no small storm, right? This is a big hurricane. But as we were watching um, the storm unfold, I had this fear because I didn't know what was going to happen. And my guess is for some of you, you've been through a literal storm like that where maybe there was some fear. But for all of us, we've been through different storms of life, situations that have happened in our lives that uh, have caused fear in us, right? And they've happened at different points. Some of, you may, some of you may even be in the middle of that, one of those storms right now. Uh, there's a saying that at any given point in life, you're in one of three places. You're either going into a storm, you're in the middle of a storm, or you're coming out of a storm. You're going into a storm, you're in the middle of a storm, you're coming out of a storm. And while that's not super encouraging, it's often true, right? Because... Life is difficult. Lots of challenging things happen in life. So when you face those difficult situations, what types of questions do you ask? Maybe you ask questions like, why is this happening? Does God really care about this, what I'm going through right now? Does God really care about my struggles? And if we're honest, sometimes that question that comes to mind is, and if God really cares then why doesn't he do something about it? Why doesn't he do something about it? I've asked that question. My guess is you have too. And actually, as we look at the book of Mark today, we're going to see the disciples have asked questions like this too. So if you've got your Bible, either on an app or in paper, turn it to Mark chapter 4. We're going to be starting in verse 35 in a moment. But what I want to do is give you a little bit of background for the book of Mark so far, okay? The first few chapters, what's happened here is the public ministry of Jesus has already started. Okay, this public ministry has started. The 12 disciples, they're following Jesus, right? So he calls disciples, they're following him. Jesus performs these miracles. He's healing people. He's casting out demons. He's, he's teaching large crowds of people about the things of God. 
So there's lots of incredible ministry going on. People are noticing this is not some ordinary dude, right? They're watching Jesus perform these amazing miracles, and they're gathering out to see him, to experience the miracles, to hear his teaching. And in Mark chapter 4, we see that um, they're actually on the edge of the Sea of Galilee. What's happened is all, so many crowds came around that Jesus and the disciples actually had to jump into a boat to pull offshore because they're worried about getting crushed. So they get into a boat, uh, pull just offshore. All these crowds are on the shore to hear Jesus teach, and he teaches these parables to them. So he's there teaching the parables to all these people, and then they're about to actually go across the Sea of Galilee, and that's what we're going to read about in our passage today. Now, the Sea of Galilee, just to give you a little bit of background there, it's surrounded by mountains, and it's known for these sudden and fierce storms. And these, these storms would, would rage, and they'd come suddenly and just make a huge impact, but, but they knew about this. And some of the disciples were fishermen, so I'm sure they knew, okay, there's always chances this could happen, right? Um, but we're about to read about a storm um, that would cause great Fear in them. So here's my question for you. As we think about this storm and we relate it to the storms of life that we go through, my question for you is this. What should we do when life gets tough? What should we do when life gets tough? We're going to unpack this phrase throughout the, our message today, but when life gets tough, my encouragement to you is that we remember his presence and seek his purpose. Remember his presence and seek his purpose. Let's look at the text together. Again, we're in Mark chapter 4, starting in verse 35. It says this, On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. So I'm going to pause here for a second because we see here that there's this massive storm, so much so the waves, they're crashing into the boat. And we're going to see here in a second that the disciples are terrified because they've got zero control in the situation. They don't know what's going to happen. They're terrified. And as we think about some of the storms of life that we face, maybe you felt that way before. Something's happening in your life. You didn't want that to happen. You didn't expect it to happen. But it's here, and you feel like you've got zero control. Disciples felt that way, too. And they're here. They're in the middle of the storm. Verse 38 says this, But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? They're, <laughs> it's, it's interesting. They, they wake him up. He's sleeping. There's a massive storm. The boats, they got waves are coming in, and he's still sleeping. They wake him up, and they're like, he must not care, right? So they wake him up. What are you doing? We're dying. Come on, Jesus. What's going on here? Do you really care? As we think about the disciples, it's easy to judge them because they're going to be fine. We know that. We know the story. They're going later. They're going to be fine. But for us, we ask that question sometimes, too, when we face those difficult circumstances. We ask, God, do you really care? God, if you really cared, you would have done something about this. God, if you really cared, my marriage wouldn't be in this situation. God, if you really cared, my kids wouldn't be dealing with this difficult thing going on in their lives. God, if you really cared, we wouldn't be wrestling with this uh, this hey, I just lost my job situation. Like, hey, what am I going to do? What's going to happen? God, if you really cared, I wouldn't be in this financial hole, right? Like, God, I bought a lottery ticket. I'm trying to help you. Come on. I'll even tie 10% of the winnings, right? But we think about all these situations. God, if you really cared, I wouldn't have this pain I'm feeling. God, if you really cared, I wouldn't be divorced. And we can think about different situations in life that we've experienced and are experiencing. God, if you really cared, wouldn't you do something? And we wonder, does God really care? So remember, the, 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 the lesson we're learning today, when life gets tough, to remember his presence and to seek his purpose. Let's go ahead and unpack that. The first one being, when life gets tough, we should remember his presence. Here in the text, what's happening? Jesus is sleeping. I'm just kind of curious. Anyone here a heavy sleeper? 
Any, anyone? Just raise a few hands. We've got a few. Okay. So here's the deal. In our house, I'm a heavy sleeper. My wife's not. If our neighbor is in their living room and coughs, my wife may wake up, right? She's just a very light sleeper in that way. But if someone breaks into our house in the middle of the night to play drums, I may sleep through that, right? That's just, a, that's just the difference between the two of us. Um, here in the situation, I, I don't know. I mean, Jesus, t- he taught all day while standing in a boat. I mean, imagine that's exhausting. But then he's in this boat, massive storms going on. He's sleeping, and the disciples, they're freaking out. But they didn't need to because Jesus was with them. Jesus is there with them. And that's one of the lessons that we can learn, too, because what Jesus tells disciples and it tells each of us, what does it say in Matthew 28, 20? It says this, I am with you always to the end of the age. He is more powerful than anything you'll ever face. He will never leave you. He is always with you. If you are following Jesus, he is with you no matter what storm of life you're going through. He is with you. So most of us have been through, I'll give you an example, uh, a financial storm of some point, just to share a story from our lives. Um, we had one point where um, we had some money and savings and some medical bills, and we thought, okay, we're, we can handle this. We're ready. We've been planning. We're going to be fine. So the medical bills come in, and then a few more medical bills come in. Go, whoa, whoa, hang on a second. This is a little more than we thought it was going to be. And then a third round comes in, a little more than we thought it was going to be two. So you start to get nervous, but you're like, okay, we've got a little bit of of savings here. I think we'll be fine. And then one car has problems and we're in the car repair shop. A few days later, the other car has problems in the car repair shop. Like, wait a second. Okay, it's starting to get nervous. And then uh, we had another medical situation happen that all of a sudden, before you know it, I'm going, okay, I had the savings. I thought we're fine. Now it's gone. I don't know how we're going to pay some of these bills that are coming in. And, And Katie and I looking at each other, we're just not sure what to do. And if I can be honest, I was a little frustrated with God in that moment. Of, man, I, I feel like I was doing all the right things, but we're still in this spot, God. What am I supposed to do? What do I do? I, it, it was hard to trust him in that moment. Well, less than a week later, I get an envelope in the mail. And I open it up, and it's a check from my dentist. I don't know about you, but I don't normally get money from my dentist. That's just not a thing, Right? It's just, so I pull it up, and I'm like, wow, okay, so two things came to mind. I've got two strong convictions in that moment. One is that I need to trust God. This is his way of showing me, hey, I've got you. I'm with you. I'm going to take care of you. And I knew I needed to trust God, and I had that conviction. The second conviction I had is that I probably needed to start flossing again. That was kind of one of those things as I opened up that envelope. But as you think about whatever storm of life you're in now or have been recently or will be in soon, Jesus is with you. He's with you. By the way, if you're here and you don't know who Jesus is, man, I'd love to talk to you after service. Come catch me. I'd love to talk to you just to share who he is and why he can be with you in any storm that you can face. As we're talking about this, we talk about when life gets tough, we remember his presence. Our next point, when life gets tough, we should seek his purpose. Now, here, Jesus, he tells the disciples to go to the other side. They're not in the storm because they disobeyed Jesus. They're not in the storm because they did something wrong. They're in the storm because they're obeying Jesus. And I really think, and we're about to see this here in the text, that Jesus is trying to teach the disciples something in the storm that they could not have learned on the safety of the shore. He's trying to teach them something there that they couldn't have learned in the shore. And, and for us, in the same ways, when we go through things, sometimes we can learn during the storm what, what's happening, but sometimes we don't understand until later what's happening, right? Um, that, that's one of the situations we're going to see here. The disciples don't actually understand until after the storm about what's happening. But we know, regardless of what happens in our lives, what is Romans 8.28 says? It says this, God is working all things together for our good. It doesn't mean that he only gives us good things. It says he's working all things, the good, the bad, the ugly, all the things. He works them together for our good. So 
Let's look at the text and see what happens here to the disciples. Mark chapter 4, verse 39, it says, And he awoke, it's talking about Jesus, and Jesus awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. I'm going to pause there again, because we see here, Jesus, he rebukes the wind. This is not some, like, small request from Jesus, like, hey, could you, you know, calm down a little bit? Like, no, peace, be still. He spoke with authority to stop the storm. Now, some of you in the room may have young kids or have had young kids in the past, and you may have used some version of that phrase once a week, once a day, maybe even more. Peace, be still, quiet, hold still, right? Some version of that. When you say that, you're looking for immediate results, right? You're not, that's not a suggestion. That's, hey, hang on, hold still, don't move, quiet, whatever that looks like for you, right? It, you're expecting immediate results. In the same way here, Jesus, he speaks with authority, expecting the immediate results, and one thing I want to emphasize here is the power of Jesus. He just speaks once and the storm calms. Because it just takes one word from God. It just takes one word from God. It takes one word from God. It just takes one word from God. Jesus spoke and the storm was still. Just like that. He shows his power. Verse 40. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? He's calling them out. I mean, several of them are fishermen. They've seen storms before. They're going through this terrible situation, but they don't have faith in him. They have fear. They're choosing fear over faith, but Jesus, he expects this faith out of them. So instead of just sitting there and getting mad in the middle of the storm, he calms them. He shows them his power. Why? So that they would have greater faith in him. And when we're afraid, we have to ask ourselves, when we look at this example, the disciples are supposed to have faith. What should we do? We should have faith, right? We should trust in God. First Peter 5, 9 says this, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. He cares for you. He, he's with you. If there's something that keeps you awake at night, just give that thing to God. If you're worried about your kids, something going on in their life, give it to God. If you're going through some conflict in your marriage right now, give it to God. If you're dealing with that really frustrating coworker or supervisor at work, give it to God. If you're dealing with a health problem, give it to God. Whatever it might be that's going on in your life, give it to God because he cares for you. He is with you. He is walking alongside of you. He wants to help you. And he's there teaching the disciples to trust him, to have faith. And let's see how they respond here. Verse 41, and it says this. And they, that's the disciples, were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? You see, this great storm happens and it causes great fear in the disciples. But Jesus calms the storm, but what happens? They're still having this great fear. So they went from afraid of the storm to going, Whoa. Who is this Jesus? How did he just do that? They didn't understand his power. And as we see in the, in, the, in the book of Mark, as we see more of the story of Jesus unfold, they'll continue to understand his power more and more. But not only would they understand his power more, but they would understand his love more as well. And Jesus showed that power in order to grow their faith. So we know as we look at this passage, what do we know? That when a storm comes, that you and I, we are never alone. Jesus is with us. When the storms come, don't ask the question, why? Ask the question, what? 
Because if you ask the question, why, it doesn't get you anywhere. Why is this happening to me? Why, why, why I don't understand the circumstance? Okay, all right, I got that. I get that. And I'm tempted to ask that question too when difficult things happen. But don't ask the question, why, is my encouragement today. Ask the question, what? God, what do you want me to learn from this? And what do you want me to do next? Seek his purpose. When life gets tough, we should remember his presence and seek his purpose. And remember at the beginning we talked about how we're in one of three places at any given moment. We're either going into a storm, we're in the middle of a storm, or we're coming out of a storm. And we're, that's often true for us. Why? Because life is difficult. We live in a broken world full of all kinds of brokenness, right? But we know that Jesus is with us and that one day, not only is he with us, but one day he's going to return. He's going to create a new heaven and new earth. And Revelation chapter 21 talks about that, how one day there will be no more sin, no more pain, no more death. There'll be a whole lot of joy as we spend eternity with Jesus. If you're here today and you're not a Christian, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you want to be forgiven of your sins, the wrong you've done, and, and you want to spend that eternity with God, hey, I'd love to talk with you afterwards and share more about that. Because for all of us here that are here as a church gathered today as Christians, we know that we have that future to look forward to, that we will spend eternity with God in heaven. So we look forward to that. But in the meantime, what do we do? Like the disciples, they're gathered in this boat, in this, in this story, right? And that's really kind of in a way what we're doing here. We are gathered together as the church. We're not perfect. Nobody here is perfect. But we gather here. I know, Bill, I know he wants us to be a place where you belong, where you can come with your anxieties, your fears, and your brokenness, and you can experience that same grace that everyone else around you is experiencing because we need that. We need that grace. We need that encouragement from each other to build each other up, that love to keep moving on together. So we gather together. We follow Jesus and we trust him. So my question, as we're wrapping up in a few minutes here, my question for you is this. What burden are you carrying today? What burden? What's going on in your life that you're worried about? I'm actually going to pause for a second. I want you to think about this. What are you worried about most right now in your life? What keeps you up at night? What distracts you while you're driving? What's got you worried the most? And then when you get worried, think about what we were talking about today, looking in this passage and talking about trusting Jesus. What should we do when we get worried? We should remember his presence and seek his purpose. So have that in your mind and think, how can you remember whatever you're worried about right now? How can you remember his presence in the midst of that storm? Or how can you seek his purpose? What is he teaching you in the midst of that storm to reflect on that? And here's my encouragement to you is before the end of today, to just write that down. What is God trying to teach you? Maybe it's a storm you're going through now, or maybe it's a storm you've gone through recently. What is God trying to teach you? And just write that out so that you can reflect on that, pray over that, ask God, teach me more. What do you want me to learn? Thank you for teaching me, just to show that appreciation to him. Why? Because he is with you. remember, church, that when life gets tough, we should remember his presence and seek his purpose. Remember his presence and seek his purpose. Let's pray.